Okay, this is just a quick video how to make a rectangle address plaque. Somebody in the Inkscape group was wanting them made, so. Okay, I've opened up Inkscape. I select my rectangle tool, rec square, rectangle, whatever. Click and pull down. It doesn't really matter the size because if I want an exact size, I'm going to have to come up here, select my units of inches, and I believe what they were looking for, sorry, I don't want that locked, was a 6 inch by 20 inch so 6 by 20 and now there's my 6 by 20 inch rectangle plaque the example they had shown had rounded corners so if you come over here to your node editor tool select it and then you come over here on a square or rectangle you'll have this little dot when you hover over it'll turn red click it pull it down that'll round your corners off so now we have a 6 by 20 inch rectangle with rounded corners. Now the next thing you want to do is put, they wanted mounting holes, or it looked like in the picture anyway. So what I do is I'll select a square, and I'm going to click and pull out that square. And it's round, don't freak out. That's because I rounded these corners, so when I make another square, it continues to round them until I tell it to stop. The way you get to stop that is come up here and select this, make, them sh make the corners sharp, that will return it to an actual square. So now what I'm gonna do is say I want these holes to be centered about three quarters from the side. I'm gonna select my lock here and I'm gonna make my squares three quarters of an inch like that. And then now with your snapping turned on over here, I'm gonna drag this over and it'll snap to the corner I'm going to change the color there so you can see it. It snaps to the actual corner of the rectangle where it was before I rounded the corners because I haven't converted this to a path. If I convert this to a path, it won't snap to that corner anymore. But this is still an object. It's a rectangle. So you bring this square over and snap it to that corner. Now I'll take my circle tool, hold control, pull that down. You hold control to keep it symmetrical. Now let's say I want quarter inch holes. My ratio is locked. I'll enter quarter inch, and that will make it quarter inch wide, quarter inch high. Now I'll change the color again to like a green so you can see. Grab that and also turn on this here, snapping to object midpoint. Now I can come in here and grab this circle, and it will snap the midpoint of the circle to the corner of that square. Now I select them both, hit Control D, which is just edit, duplicate. That gives me, it duplicated it. Now, oh crap. Now I'll have to select those both because I clicked off. Now I can drag this box over and let it snap to that corner. Select the circle, let it snap to that corner. Then I'll repeat that, Control D. Come down to the bottom of the rectangle, snap to that corner. Get the circle, snap it to that corner. One more time, control D, snap to that corner, circle, snap to that corner. Now my circles, my mounting holes are evenly spaced all the way around this plaque. So now you just select the squares and delete those, you don't need them. Now I have my rectangle plaque and I have my four mounting holes. So now I'll select the four mounting holes, path, union. It looks like they disappeared, but they didn't. They just dropped underneath the rectangle. So if you hit this, raise it to the top, that brings them back up where you can see them, and you need them on top to difference them out. So now I can select both and path difference. Now I'm going to change that to black. I'm tired of looking at red. Now there's my rectangle address plaque template with rounded corners, four mounting holes, and that's ready to go start adding font to. That's a path, it's ready to cut, but you need the font. So now, the last thing would be adding the font. I'll type out 6022, I believe it was one of the numbers they wanted. I'll change the color of that to red so I can see. Because anytime you're working with stuff like this, if you have some contrast in the colors, it makes it a lot easier to see what's going on and what layer you're on you know you always if you're differencing something out it needs to be on top of the other piece and it's hard to tell when your colors are the same or if you're working in outline mode so I've typed out 6022 now to pick a font 
and I believe the font they had chose was vintage ITC I'm gonna use it just for just to be a little more authentic what they were looking for but so down here somewhere will be my vintage ITC change my font now I need that to run vertically so while I'm in the font text editor I can come over here and select this option as you can see right now this is grayed out I can't select anything here I select this and select the middle option that drops it down but it's not oriented right now this option is available I can click that select the middle option and that cascades my font vertically like I need it so then I would bring that font up put it in place um, now I can go ahead and convert that to a path by either hitting path object to path or you could just shift control plus on your keyboard now I'll size those up a little more um, I would probably tighten these up but what I'll do now that they're a path I'll hit shift control K I would oh it's an actual group so I'm gonna hit shift control G and that will ungroup them now I'm going to move the six down by using the arrow key on my keyboard maybe move the two up a little bit then what I'm gonna do is select all of them and I'm gonna go to my align and distribute menu which mine's always over here on the side but if you don't have it open you can go to object align and distribute and open that menu up now that I have that up, I'm going to select this option to make the gaps vertically equal. And that will space those out evenly vertical. And then I will align the letters center. Because even though the font tells you it is, it doesn't really center them perfectly. So now they're centered and they're spaced evenly. Now I can adjust the size up a little more to get a little nicer sized letters in there. Numbers, whatever they are. So now, the next thing I would do is throw my bridges on there. And normally, with like a six, I'll come in here and break it and then clean the nodes up. But for the purpose of this, I'm just going to put bridges through the middle. So I got a bridge there. You don't want you want to make sure your bridges are at least an eighth of an inch thick. On this, I'd probably go uh, point two little less than a quarter inch now I'm gonna select that I hold shift select the six and use the center on my align and distribute menu then I'll control D to duplicate that rectangle and I'm gonna bring it down here because this zero needs bridge too and same deal I'll select the zero and center it all which it already was because I centered it on the six but now I can select both of these it's hard to see but the rectangles are on top so I'll change the color just for visual select both of these and go path difference and then select both of these path difference now I have my letters bridge they're ready to add so now I will select all of those and I'll go path union that's one path now I will hold shift and select my rectangle but before I difference this I'm going to go over here to my line and distribute again center it in the middle and center it up and down so that now my numbers are bridged they're converted to a path and they're perfectly centered on the rectangle now all I need to do is select everything and I'll go path difference and there's my first address plaque ready to go the only thing left to do here <clears throat> would be anytime you're working with font you're gonna have some cleanup with nodes this font actually doesn't look that bad but the issue I would have with it is your kerf is probably not gonna fit well in some of these spots what I do to determine that is I'll take a circle hold control pull it out symmetrically and that's 80 thousandths say I'm cutting these in 16 gauge with fine cut tips I'd need 45 thousandths so I'll make that 45 thousandths and then I'll take that around and make sure my kerf would actually fit here. It will fit there, but that's kind of tight. I would probably go to my node editor and pull this out a little bit to give my torch a little more room to breathe and make sure I'm not cutting over a previously cut spot. So you go around, check all your spots, 
you know this I would probably do some adjusting on these but you can you can determine that based on what you want you know I like here that's it would fit but that's a little tight so I would probably select this node and pull it down a little bit maybe pull this one up a tad and just go around and make minor adjustments clean up excess nodes that you don't know, need and that's all you got to it here I probably pull this over a little widen that gap up this node for example doesn't need to be there this one you could probably eliminate this one you could eliminate go around eliminate nodes you don't need and space out spots that are too tight something else like this if I go back okay I'm gonna hit control Z a few times to go back where I adjusted this I would probably want this two to match as well as where I adjusted these up here but I'm just gonna show you on this part I would want both twos to be the same so what I would do is select this node come down here select this node by holding shift that way they're both selected and then hold control select this one and drag it over and it's gonna do this one identical and same way up here I could have when I adjusted those if I just selected this held shift and select this then they will move together but you if you have matching numbers you'd probably want to do that to keep everything the same and then like say just delete the nodes you don't need and save it as a DXF and an SVG for future editing and that's all there is to it hopefully that helps you out thanks for watching